project I've always wanted to do, mosaic covered wine bottles. I did this in a week. Um, I wanna teach you how to do it. It's very simple. This actually started out like this. Um, I took this bottle or a bottle like this, I removed the label and I created this from a butter bottle. So this is um, a really beautiful, easy gift to make and it can also make a spectacular centerpiece. I'll show you how later, but for now, let's learn how to make a mosaic covered wine bottle. So I'm gonna show you how to make a, um, a mosaic wine bottle. Time this like a week before Mother's Day or a week before your friend's birthday and you wanna give them a gift, that's when you want to start because if you're going to work full time or going to school, you'll probably be doing this at night or weekend. So um, give yourself a week before you're going to present this as a gift. The first thing you need to do is drink wine. That's the really fun part. That's the best part. So when you're done with the bottle of wine, and here I have a week's worth of wine, I collect the bottles, keep them over to the side, and then I'm going to peel the label off the bottle of wine. How do you do it? Well, you take, in this case, we put a pot full of warm soapy water and then you're gonna put the bottle right into it. And you're gonna let that soak overnight. So in the morning, you should be able to easily just peel off the labels. So if you wanna put two or three um, bottles together in one big pot, you can do it. But overnight, you need to soak them and peel the bottle labels off. So you wanna start with a nice, clean, formerly full bottle of wine that you just enjoyed. So on your hangover, come out to the studio with me and we're going to mosaic that. It's gonna be amazing. It's like going to work. My office is five feet away from my kitchen. Come into my studio. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. As an artist, I'm always inspired by other artists' work. And so not too long ago, I went to an art gallery in Palm Springs and I saw some mosaic covered wine bottles that were spectacular. And I started looking online and I found a bunch of them. So they're really easy to do. They're beautiful and they can be used later as a votive. You can put a candle in it or you can use them as uh, like a beautiful vase and put flowers in them. I would suggest you do a cluster of these. So do three or five wine bottles, put them as a centerpiece for your table and they'll be spectacular looking. So this is what it starts out as, right? Just a regular wine bottle. And the first step is of course, drink the wine. That's the fun part. The second step is you've got to remove the label. So what I do is I soak this bottle in water overnight and then the next day you should be able to peel the label off. So as you can see back here, I've done this with a bunch of different bottles and Chardonnay bottles are slightly different uh, shape than Cabernet bottles. And it doesn't matter. You can do Chardonnay or Cabernet bottles, Pinot Noir, it doesn't matter. They're all kind of the same size and shape. And once you get the label off, the third step is you're gonna start to attach the mosaic or glass tiles to the bottle. And this is really easy to do also. Now it looks very intimidating, but I'm gonna show you through this process how it's done. The first thing I wanted to do with my wine bottle, because I collect a bunch of vintage brooches and pendants. These aren't vintage though. These I got at Michael's, but they look vintage. So I'm taking some Gothic crosses and I removed the back of the pendant. See this little thing here? I took it off, I removed it, and then I slightly bent the cross arms here so it's gonna wrap around a bottle. And I did those two steps with this tool. Now you can get this anywhere. You can get this at a Michaels, a Joann's. It's a little wire bender cutter. And this I use for a million different things in mosaic. So definitely grab yourself one of these. So once I prepared the cross, I'm going to figure out where it's going to go on my bottle. I'm going to kind of center it on the bottle. Now see this thing behind it, this box with corks in it? I made this and this is a project box that holds a bunch of round objects. 
so that I can attach things to them. And the cork works as kind of a spongy thing that holds um, holds rounded pieces on really well so they don't move. So I suggest making yourself a cork box at some point. It's really easy. I just use them with corks and white glue on a box and it keeps everything really stable and easy to work on. So you might ask, where do you get the mosaic glass and mirrors and tiles that I'm going to be using for my mosaic bottle? The place that I go, well, I, I get my stuff from several places, actually. Um, Witsend.com is a website that I go to that you can buy a lot of these new tiles. They're gorgeous. Um, they come in different sizes and shapes and colors. Um, this is called Gold Rectangles from Witsend.com. So here's some rectangles. Um, here's some little, uh, tiny little pieces called rose pink. Also got these at wit's end. But I get a lot of my material, um, I try to upcycle stuff. So I find things at thrift stores and flea markets. I break pieces of old glass. And I also find stained glass makers in my neighborhood. And I go to those stained glass manufacturers and they always have ends or smaller pieces that they'll sell you or even give them to you for free. Those are smaller pieces that you can cut into these little squares or rectangles or uh, circles or leaf designs. So those are really easy to find too. So you can find pieces almost anywhere, but as a beginner, you might wanna to go to Michael's or Joann's and look for mosaic glass or go online. And um, you can just Google mosaic glass or mosaic mirror or mo mosaic ceramic pieces and you can buy them online. So what I'm going to do first is figure out what the design is going to be, but I'm not going to glue my main piece, this, this piece of jewelry. I'm not going to glue this on the bottle first. I'm going to glue all the pieces around it, but I'm not going to glue this yet. Why am I not going to glue this yet? because when we get done gluing all of our tiles on here, I'm gonna grout it. I'm gonna grout it in 24 hours. But you can't grout around delicate jewelry like this because the grout will get stuck all around it and in the, the small little spaces and it'll mess it up. So after I grout, the last thing I'm gonna glue onto my mosaic will be my jewelry. That's the very last thing I'll glue but I need to put it on here for now so I'll find out where I'm gonna space the rest of the pieces. Okay, so I'm going to start gluing on my mosaic pieces right now. I love this part. This is the really creative, fun part. This is the time when I decide where all of my mosaic tiles are gonna go on the bottle. So this is creative playtime. So I'll start to take my pieces and kind of arrange them around where I think I want to put them. I'm not gluing yet, I'm just playing. And because my, uh, in this case, the piece of jewelry, my Gothic cross is gonna be in the center, I'm going to, I think, probably want to mosaic around it with a bright gold to kind of really make this this pop. So I'm going to kind of play, it's kind of sticky here from where the, the um, label was. So I can kind of decide, okay, I want to maybe put uh, pieces around the cross to make the cross really pop. So those are the pieces I would probably glue first, are these pieces that are going to go around my cross. And then I'm going to figure out on the borders, then I'll start on the borders and work my way around it, like how I want to do borders. You know, maybe I'll do like a, a pretty diagonal design here with both greens and blues, because these greens and blues will look really pretty together. So I might do something like this around the edges, but this is where I start to, to really imagine how the pieces will look. And this is, this is a really fun part. I like this. This is where you get to play and you don't have to commit because you're not gluing. But when I start to glue, this is what I'm going to use. This is called E6000 glue. And E6000 glue is great for glass. It dries clear and it dries kind of like um, it has a little bit of give to it. It's mushy. And so it's really good at gluing around rounded edges. So this is really good for a glass bottle. E6000, you can buy this anywhere. Again, Michael's, Joann's Craft Shops, art stores. 
Um, even hardware stores have E6000. This is really, really easy to find. So grab yourself like a ton of it. I go through gallons of this stuff. It's great. So E6000 glue is what we're going to use. Once we figure out where our tiles are going to go, I'm going to figure out how many tiles I'm going to need. And if I have to cut them into little smaller shapes, I can do that. And then I'll finally glue them with the E6000. This is gonna be so pretty. Because it's curved, you have to kind of be patient and hold down the pieces of glass while they're drying a little bit. It'll be a lot easier when we start doing the bands around the sides because we can slowly move the bottle around. But for this center piece, which goes around the Gothic cross, we want this part done first. See, eventually this is all going to be grouted without this piece. And then the last thing I'll do after it's grouted is place the piece where I want it on the inside. So this is going to look neat, good. And again, you know, as you go along, you might change your mind. You might want to add things, take off things. This glue gives you plenty of time to kind of peel something off if you don't love it and try something new. See what I'm doing here? Just adding some gold on the tips. That's gonna be really pretty. And then I'll do two more on these edges to just punch out that cross design. All right. Can you give me enough room to do this at the bottom? Yes. Okay, good. I wanted to do this design along the bottom. And then these smaller pieces in rose gold. See, this is rose gold color. And so are these little babies. These are rose gold too. So I'm gonna pull, pull in some of this rose gold. going to grout. So in between all these spaces is going to be black grout. I'm going to grout in black for drama. Drama. And I'm using a bunch of jewel tones and rose gold because everything starts and ends with the jewelry. This is the focal point. So we want everything to accentuate this and complement the piece of jewelry in the middle. Okay, 
So this happens a lot when you do a project. You get kind of partially through and you start to look at what you're creating, which is going to be gorgeous. However, the original cross I was going to use in the center now kind of disappears because of these big chunky pieces and the bolder colors I chose. But what do you guys think of this cross? I want to put a crucifix in there, but I think this one will be a lot better looking and not get lost with all these big chunks because this is a bigger, chunkier piece of jewelry with more defined lines. And it even has little square crystals in it that match kind of these square pieces. So I think this might be a better match. But how beautiful is this gonna be? Oh my gosh, this is gonna be amazing. I like this better. Okay, so I've gotten about halfway done with the body of this wine bottle. So you can see here's the outline. So my cross is gonna go right there in the middle, but we're not gonna glue in the cross until after we, after we grout. So that's where it's gonna go. And then I've started to do a pattern around the bottle. How beautiful is that? So this is using all mirrored glass, colored glass, millefiore flowers. These are from Italy, these are glass. So it's all glass and mirror. Isn't that pretty? It's gonna be amazing. And then when we put the cross in at the end, after it's grouted in black, it's really gonna pop out. I mean, how beautiful is that? A nice chunky cross with these nice chunky pieces of glass and mirror and beads. I mean, wowza. I love when a project starts to come together.